Hi, welcome into my home. Our home here at Mark's Minis where beginning painters are figuring out the amazing results they can get with the new The Army Painter Speed Paints. It's catching on like wildfire and I am fanning the flames. My friends know that when I picked up this bottle of speed paints, everything changed for me. It changed the game completely. My quality spiked and I started posting my results fanatically. And that led directly to the creation of this channel. Since then, local artists have come to me asking me to promote their instructional courses and local game conventions. How can I say no? So we're up to our fifth interview in the series now, and this one's really good. We get to talk with Meredith Somavia, and she is the lead painting coordinator for all the painting events at Klubicon, our local gaming convention. And she's a mom, so she has a fun story about getting her kids into Kublacan and watching them grow and advance through the painting competitions. It's a really fun story, and she'll even have advice on how to get your spouse into your miniatures hobby. You won't want to miss that. So please stay watching through to the end. We'll, we'll have a quick wrap-up and some really exciting news for some upcoming videos. Thanks so much, and enjoy our chat with Meredith. She's so fun. Meredith, thanks, thanks so much for uh, coming on to our show. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into miniatures painting. Let's go back to the beginning. Very beginning. So I was always interested in arts and crafts from a very early age, but it wasn't until I started dating my husband in college that I was actually introduced to miniature models, which opened my eyes to everything. And of course, what is the best way to bring your girlfriend into understanding your games, but to ask her to paint? <laughs> So actually, that's how I started. It was the Imperial Guard for 40K. I ended up painting all of those little guys. And of course, he didn't pick one of the ones that has, you know, fewer models. No, it was a ton of models. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> pretty insane. Trial by fire. I like it. Total trial by fire. And then it wasn't until a little bit later when I started going, you know, I'm not so keen on how these are coming out. I wonder how I can make them better. Then we actually started going to a scenario game hobby shop in Fremont and then uh, started going to Kubicon as well. So once those happening, I started getting introduced to a lot of painters. So that's kind of the beginning of my story. Yeah, that's a great story, Meredith. Uh, um, I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of my audience is taking note on how to get their uh, spouses and girlfriends into the hobby now. Um, <laughs> What do you think, uh, just go, we're going by the script here that of course uh, chat, chat GPT provided for us. Uh, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about miniatures painting? And I just want to chime in a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes I'll be uh, in a hobby store and uh, there might be a parent there who's bringing their kid and um, it's clear that they're not in the hobby and they're not interested at all. Uh, and I'm sure they have some misconceptions because of the way they look at me. So. <laughs> Uh, what would you say is a misconception about uh, miniature painting in general? I would say, because I've actually had the experience of being uh, talking to other parents whose kids are interested in the hobby and they have no clue, really the misunderstanding is that it's super expensive, that first, and the other one is being is that it's really hard because the miniatures are so small. Those would be the two big ones. Yeah, really two good, excellent points there. So uh, so um, uh, I'm sure uh, we can come up with a, a couple ways to battle those points. What would be your uh, initial suggestions on uh, how do we tackle the parents' questions about cost and uh, the difficulty? Well, I would just give them uh, specifics in regards. Look, all you're looking for are some of these little paints, which they last for a very long time once they take care of them, just like anything else. And just making sure that the very beginning it's going to be a little messy until they get used to it um and i would say the second part probably would be going to the local game store and finding some of those painters out there of just getting some of those little tips and tricks or you know coming to your channel too and get some ideas oh yeah thanks because uh, i was just going to mention uh on a previous interview uh a great suggestion we got was um buy your paints according to the project don't go out and recommend or buy whole sets. Uh, I made that mistake in the beginning and I've got a lot of paints I never used and some of them have spoiled and it just doesn't make sense. They take up space. Just just figure out what you're going to paint and paint to buy your products to that project and then figure out where you want to move on from there. Uh, you're the lead coordinator of painting events at Kublacan. What kind of events do you organize and what do they entail? So first of all, we have paint and take, which is the biggest 
Uh, people come in, they get to paint a model, they get hands-on opportunities. We have a bunch of our volunteers there who are experienced painters who come in and actually help and give free advice. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, we also have our speed paint, which is actually what Wayne runs, where you get to paint a model in 45 minutes, which I believe some of those speed paints you've been really, really, really happy with, right? Um, but he actually provides all the paints and the brushes, and the, that's the most important part is in order to keep it consistent. Aha, yes, because I wanted to chime in with that. I seriously looked at the speed painting competition, but mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go for a different event this time. Why? Because I do want to put my new The Army Painter speed paints to the test. So I think I'm going to show them off at the paint and take where I can bring my own paints, correct? Yes, you can. Yeah. So, uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do. When I go to KublaCon, we'll try to make a video of my uh, experience at the paint and take, and uh, and we'll see how these speed paints uh, hold up uh, to the uh, to the, uh, my competition, shall we say? Oh, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. You're gonna you're gonna like that video. The third component of what we organize are actually all of the painting classes. Mm. Those are have not been publicized yet. Ah. We're just getting the final polish on those and making sure that all of our our artists have everything that they need uh, because there's you know when you have airbrush classes you have to make sure that there's stuff that's provided for it um, so we do have airbrush we have various different techniques we have multiple teachers coming that are going to be giving us a lot and we're really excited yeah, uh, a couple of my previous interview guests have uh, have gone into detail on some of those classes. Uh, uh, really looking forward to those, um, and also the, uh, the there's some logistical challenges too, uh, not just for the supplies, but um, uh, some of the artists are traveling from across the country, so mm -hmm. uh, you know we have to uh, make sure everyone's taken care of. Uh, yes. Lots, lots to do there, Meredith. We know you're going to be really busy organizing the Kublacon stuff. Uh, do you have any personal projects you'd like to share with us? Uh, and uh, if you have anything going on on social media, you can tell us about that too. Okay, um, I have a couple of models that I'm going to be working on. I haven't quite started them yet. I'm at the prepping stage. Uh, one of them's from Big Child. Uh, that's a company based in Spain. That's one of the ones. And I'm also going to be working on another one that is from Bombshell. And that's a bust. It's the first time I've ever attempted a bust. So that's going to be a fun one. And it's a fawn. So, oh, um, oh yeah. yeah. I'm already so, visualizing the uh, the vines and the, and the leaves. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have uh, links for those uh, in the description down below. Tell us a little bit about the impact that this hobby has had on your life personally and professionally? Well, I would say the the first thing is, is I've ended up with some of my closest friends as a result of this hobby. Uh, I'm very blessed actually to be working with them as part of my team and we work really well together. And the thing is, is we've also come closer as a result of that. Um, I've also created a Kubla family as because of this hobby. Without that, I mean, every year we get together during the COVID years, it was so difficult for us because we didn't have that looking forward to over Memorial Day weekend. I, it's also really me personally, it made it possible for me to see that I could create something so beautiful that with just paint and a model. Um, if you have a chance to post up that picture of the Hephaestus model with the guy with the orange cape, I never thought I'd be able to paint orange. <laughs> you, you don't even think about that. When you go out there and you go and you look at these models, you go, oh yeah, they're pretty nice. But then all of a sudden when you go into that China shop or wherever and you see the painting and you go, wow, I can do that now. Oh, they could have done this. So I would say all of that as a whole. So it's the family component, but also it, it satisfies that creative part in me, um, which as being a vice principal, you don't get a lot of time, uh, but those like that hour I can give myself in the evening, just, just painting a little bit centers me. So that would wow. be beautiful. Yeah, thanks so much for that. And that chimes in uh, with the uh, some thoughts from my previous uh, interview guest. 
um, pain a little bit every day, and also uh, the uh, the positive impact it has on your morale and your 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 psychology is uh, is not a benefit not to be ignored. Um, you know, in lieu of Xanax, for example, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, you're a mom, so uh, we could do a whole show about that, obviously. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your kids and um, your experience bringing your kids to KublaCon. I'm sure some parents want to hear about that. Okay. I have two children. Uh, they are now 13 and 15, but we had them uh, for a while there. So I had I was pregnant at KublaCon working the <laughs> painting. Uh, back then Started I was still young. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. We have stories about me walking around uh, at that point of my first child. So, uh, and then another time when I had my son and he was very young, and he, we actually set up a crib next to the painting area so wow. that he could, yeah, that was <laughs> um, And then when so there was a little interim there where we weren't able to bring them because it just it just didn't work for us personally. But then when they started getting a little bit older, we were able to take them to the YP room at KubaCon, which is fantastic. I love the working with the people over there. Um, they take from five years of age on up. Uh, they're not um, they're not daycare. <laughs> that part's yes. important. Yes. Uh, but it's uh, they expect the parents to if they're five to eight uh, that you stay with them eight on up. They actually are much more. Um, uh, they, they can be there without their parents. I think the keyword. I think the keyword is they're contained and uh, if any and watch so that if if they need something, you can call the parents right away. Yeah, and they have a very good system of check in and check out process. Nice. So that's a that's a great group. And then there's a separate, which is also part of the YP, but it's actually the team. And so that's for the 13 on up. So my son will actually be able to join that this year. My daughter has done it before. And it's, they come in, sign up for a game and leave. She got to play some role playing games that we never played. And she had to keep, she kept going back and they're up super late. And <laughs> we don't worry about it because we know that they're safe. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's a really important activity and something really uh, parents should strongly consider. Uh, this whole miniatures hobby, the painting thing, the gaming conventions, mm -hmm. board games, card games, uh, it reduces your kids screen time. You know, I see so many kids and their screen time is just getting out of control. So uh, when you uh, can put down the screen and socialize with real human beings on a physical board game, uh, the benefit for your kids is uh, is remarkable and well documented. Yes, Meredith. Um, now, I just remembered there's a couple more points you wanted to bring up about uh, KubelCon. Yes. So with the painting, one of the other areas that we do is we actually go into the young players room and do provide a class on how to paint. So the kids actually get introduced oh, to it. Yeah, actually, at one point, I even had, a, I think it was wow. a three-year-old with me. It was fantastic. And that's a story, a fun one, of I actually have seen kids go from being young all the way to actually entering into the competition. Wow. Is the second piece is we do run a painting competition, and it's there we have for kids, we have it for journeymen and then we have it for masters wow. and this past year i finally entered in masters which is the the blue moon elf wow uh, nice picture of. so yeah awesome yeah parents imagine that being able to get your kids into an artistic hobby and watching them grow through to journeymen up to masters and winning competitions that's uh that's 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 a really unique experience you can't get anywhere else. So if you can bring your kids to a local gaming convention, KubaCon is an excellent one. Burling Game, end of May. Check out the website. Uh, links below. Also, uh, the images are around us. Um, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to speak to us, Meredith. That was a lot of fun. And uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing you at KubaCon. That, that, this is going to be great. Thank you, and thank you for Hey, thanks for staying with us to the end. That was so fun chatting with Meredith. As a parent myself, I know how fun it is to get your child into the same miniatures hobby that you have right now. But there's only that brief window of time, and then they're off doing other things, and you'll never get that moments back again. 
So if you have kids that are in the hobby and can paint, this is the convention to bring them to. Kublacon, Burley Game, end of May. Tickets for painting events go on sale May 1st. So also note that this convention is within the 60th anniversary of the Doctor Who franchise. We've got a couple of excellent speed painting projects lined up with a Doctor Who spin, and we're gonna show you some new tricks with speed paints. You definitely won't wanna miss that. So please, if you find any of this content enjoyable, or informative, please let me know with a like and subscribe. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.